Hi, welcome back to the I Love Labs podcast. I'm Sally Sykes, your functional medicine health coach, and today we're going to talk about hair loss. I've struggled with hair loss myself for probably 10 to 15 years now. I think it really started at least in my 40s. I never had this super thickest hair. It's looking a lot better now if you're watching this on YouTube, so you're probably wondering what I'm talking about, but that's kind of why I wanted to make this podcast right now because I finally, after years and years of trying to optimize for the various root causes of hair loss, I feel like I've found um, some things that are really moving the needle and it was time to go ahead and make a video on it. Mine started when I was on the birth control pill in my 40s, really started to come out. In 2017, 2018, I lost about half of my hair. Maybe some of you guys can relate to this. Every time I got in the shower, it looked like a cat had died in the drain and it was so depressing. I got to where I didn't even want to take a shower. And of course that made it worse because when you don't wash your hair often enough, you're getting the hair follicles are getting clogged. I was using more and more sort of product or dry shampoo or various things to lift my hair and that was probably making things worse. I tried everything, did my own research. I ended up finding a functional medicine doctor who was amazing to help me with all kinds of other things in addition to the hair loss. But I wanna to talk today about the different root causes of hair loss. And then of course, because this is the I Love Labs podcast, what labs to ask your doctor for to try to figure out what your root cause or causes could be so you can start to address them. And then finally, I'm gonna go into the things that I have done that I feel like have worked for me, especially a couple of things that I have done recently that I, I don't even wanna to speak too soon, but I am so incredibly hopeful. I've been taking pictures of the hair in my drain. It was almost nothing yesterday. And I that, you guys, it's been a decade of just hair loss in my drain. I, you know, I had a 13 year old picture come up on Facebook the other day and my hair was so thick and gorgeous. And I remember thinking, gosh, I thought my hair was thin then. It can be really heartbreaking. This is not one of those life or death issues. I know, I know it's more of a cosmetic issue, but especially for women, it can be really hard on us not to have that hair that, that we want or that we used to have, but it is also medical and there are underlying medical conditions that do lead to more hair loss. Let's start with that. The first one is going to be nutrient deficiencies, right? We're looking at like B vitamins. Iron is a really big one being anemic. And then there's going to be low thyroid function. Hypothyroidism is another one. The other one is gonna be low hormones or imbalanced hormones in perimenopause or menopause. When we lose our hormones, that can also drastically affect our uh, ability to grow hair. And when we talk about hormones, we're also talking about being on hormonal birth control or the Mirena IUD. Anything that's interfering with our natural hormones is also gonna be a potential root cause of hair loss. Insulin resistance, the inflammation that it causes, high, high blood sugar and high insulin can also lead to hair loss. Insulin resistance is also connected to hormonal issues like PCOS. Those are both go together. Sleep, poor sleep is huge. We probably all know this, but poor sleep can lead to increases in cortisol, increases in blood sugar, inflammation, and that can all indirectly lead to hair loss as well. And again, stress, high cortisol, chronic stress. A lot of us have been dealing with chronic stress, especially since the pandemic hit. It, it really can affect your ability to grow hair. Your body, if it feels like it's in a state of fight or flight, we're set up to slow the metabolism down, not to grow hair, not to ovulate, things that would take up extra energy. Our bodies genetically are designed to stop those processes if we feel like we're under threat and to conserve energy. We don't need to be growing hair or ovulating if we're being chased by a lion, right? That's another issue. Things that I have done to help with mine is getting on a good multivitamin with methylated B complex. I also supplement with iron because uh, part of my issue is anemia. That is not the case for everyone. Before you supplement with iron, you always want to make sure you test your iron first because too much iron can be toxic. If you have too much, we don't wanna be adding to that. Test, don't guess, and make sure you're communicating with your primary care provider about whatever supplements you're taking. Low vitamin D, so adding some vitamin D supplementation if needed as well. 
optimizing my thyroid function was really critical. I'm now on Armour Thyroid and that helps a lot. Um, and that works well for me. Again, work with your provider, do a full thyroid panel test, and I will get into the, th the labs to ask your doctor for in, in a moment. Um, optimizing hormones. I'm 50, I'm still in perimenopause, having regular periods, but my hormones are not what they used to be. I have been supplementing with testosterone and progesterone for quite a while now. I have done testosterone cream for a while and recently switched to injections because I read a study that said that transdermal testosterone, like the testosterone cream, actually converts to DHT at five times higher the rate as injectable testosterone. So I wanted to try and experiment on myself and see if my hair loss would stop or at least it would get a little better if I switched from using the cream to the injections. And fortunately, testosterone injections used to all be intramuscular, the big sort of flu shot type needles, which are more difficult, I think, for a lot of patients to do at home. I certainly was not interested in doing that at home. What they found is that the subcutaneous injections, the small insulin needles, work just as well. And the levels that people achieve using um, injectable testosterone injected subcutaneously are just as good, um, and if not better. And you're simply injecting smaller amounts uh, twice a week instead of once a week, and so levels remain very stable. And then when you're injecting versus using the transdermal cream, there seems to be, according to this study, less conversion to DHT, which is the androgen responsible for a lot of a lot of hair loss that we see. I'll try anything, so far so good. It's been a couple months and I've noticed probably the biggest reduction in my hair loss in since I started losing my hair over 10 years ago. Reversing insulin resistance. I had type two diabetes about 10 years ago, lowering my carbs on a permanent lifestyle basis, I'm eating a low carb, high good fat, high protein, anti-inflammatory, whole foods diet that is gluten free. I've recently also stopped eating cow's dairy to get rid of my eye eczema. That's been helping that a lot as well. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, newest studies actually show that the safest level of alcohol consumption, you guys, is zero. And if anyone is concerned about cancer, the biggest risk factors for cancer are obesity, smoking, and alcohol consumption. I stopped the birth control pill. That was huge. Being on the birth control pill is essentially like being in chemically induced menopause. Your body stops making its own hormones and you're just given a low level of synthetic hormones that are not the same molecule that our bodies make and they don't have the same effects on the body. Progesterone, real progesterone, is great for hair growth. Progestin is not. It's more androgenic. It can lead to more hair loss. So stopping the birth control pill, I think, was, was huge in my hair loss and mood and cognition and libido and all kinds of other issues. I stopped drinking alcohol in 2014. I never looked back. I'm really just so happy with that. I never reacted well to it in the first place. I never could drink very much, but I just, it's one of those things that everybody's doing it. So you think you have to too. And one day I was like, I'm 41. I can, I don't have to do this. Why am I doing this? If it's obviously I'm getting hung over after one drink, let's maybe just not. And, and you know what? Nobody even noticed. And I've just felt so good since I stopped that I just, I will never look back on that. Eliminating gluten was huge. Gluten will glom up your thyroid function. It's highly inflammatory for everybody, even if you don't have celiac. And it's also just a non-nutrient dense source of carbohydrates that we don't need in our diet. There is no essential carb. There are essential fatty acids we have to consume that our bodies can't produce on our own. There's essential amino acids we must consume or proteins because our bodies cannot create them, but our bodies, our liver can make as much glucose as it needs from any source practically. And we really only need about a teaspoon of sugar in our bloodstream at any one time to function and the liver can make it all. So there's really no need nutritionally for, for gluten and certainly not for processed carbs and added sugar. So got rid of that. Um, and I think that helped lower my inflammation quite a bit. Another thing I tried was red light therapy for my hair loss. It was pretty expensive red light helmet therapy. It was called, I can't remember the brand. There are so many out there now, but it was really expensive. My mother gave it to me, the one that she had that was hers, or I wouldn't have bought it myself. I don't know if it helped. I was doing so many things at once. I was supplementing with iron, adding hormones, adding my thyroid hormones, 
adding my B vitamins and my biotin and my Nutrafol, that's a, an or Viviscal. Both of those supplements are fantastic. The um, active ingredients in those are is the green algae. So if you want to look up um, studies on Nutrafol and what the, the ingredient is that was shown to actually improve hair growth, that's the marine algae. And then the, it also includes some other nutrients in those. Sometimes hair loss is just cyclical, right? And typically, you guys, you'll see hair loss about three to six months after some sort of event, right? Stressful event, whether, you know, divorce, separation, a loss, illness, like COVID, right? It doesn't always happen immediately. In fact, it rarely does because of the way the hair grows. And so if you're all of a sudden losing a ton of hair, look back three to six months and see kind of what was going on. Typically it'll be some sort of stressful event. Like you were working so much at work, you weren't sleeping well, or you had a bad breakup, or there was some sort of illness. And then, so if there was something like that that you can pinpoint, then typically it will run its course and it will stop soon. But if there's a chronic underlying condition like anemia, hypothyroidism, perimenopause, menopause, uh, insulin resistance, other chronic inflammation, un underlying infection, then it, it could be ongoing. And you wanna make sure you dive in deep and find out all of the potential root causes because you might be like me. In my case, I had multiple root causes. I was also taking saw palmetto and I still do. I really think that did help because when I started to lose my hair, my testosterone was actually undetectable in labs. So one thing to keep in mind with hormones, low progesterone is a big one for loss of uh, hair. So is low estrogen. But when it comes to testosterone, it's a bit of a Goldilocks hormone when it comes to hair loss. So low testosterone and high testosterone can cause hair loss. So in my case, when I was on the birth control pill, um, there are lots of different kinds of birth control pills. I think the majority of them tend to be low androgen birth control pills, which take testosterone to zero. So those are the ones that totally decimate your libido. That's the one I was on. If you're on a birth control pill for acne, you're on a low androgen birth control pill. You may wanna get your testosterone checked, especially if you feel like you've lost motivation, you can't build muscle mass. You have no libido, no ability to orgasm, that's going to be due to that birth control pill. There are other, are other pills that have a higher androgen index and will not kill your testosterone, but they will have possibly other effects that you won't like. So um, there are lots of lots of options for birth control. I know if you're my age, the ideal is being with someone who's had a vasectomy or keeping track of your cycles and just knowing that the four days before you ovulate and the two days after are really your danger days, using condoms, a non-hormonal IUD like Paragard, which is made of copper and does not use any artificial or synthetic hormones. Lots of other options. You guys, this last one that I did for my hair loss, I am so excited about. So the two things that I'm most excited about are switching from a testosterone cream to injectable testosterone in the two months ago. Huge, huge impact on my hair. The other thing that I did at the same time, and I almost wish I had done them separately so I knew which one was working, but I really, based on the studies that I'm seeing, I think it's both. Um, I started reading about generic Cialis or Tadalafil, I think is how, how you say it. And I've been reading about it for men because men are prescribed it for prostate health, for BPH, and for erectile dysfunction. And it's one of the ones you can take, you take it daily, for erectile dysfunction, it's not one of those ones that you have to take right before intercourse, but it's just, it improves blood flow essentially. But it turns out because it increases blood flow, it also helps with hair growth. And it's also been shown to improve cardiovascular health in men. And I wondered, well, what about women? Women are often not studied, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be helpful for women. And so I thought, well, heart disease kills a lot of women. A lot of women are dealing with low libido a lot of women are dealing with hair loss. Why can't we try this? And it was pretty impressive and immediate what it did for, for my libido. This has brought me back to where I was in my tw early 20s, to where I feel really like myself. And I was already on the way, and I was, I was a lot better than I was at least 10 years ago. But this, is, this has been such a gift. And again, I don't know if it is the generic Cialis or the Tadalafil or the injectable testosterone, or if it's both of them together, but 
Since I made that change two months ago, the subtle but noticeable uptick in my libido has been so much fun. And my hair's not falling out anymore. <laughs> like it's not, like I can't see hair in the drain as of yesterday. Now, well, I'll, I'll have to keep you guys updated, but I've been taking pictures and it's been less and less and less. Even when I started taking pictures, I started taking pictures because I noticed it was already half of what it used to be. So I wish I had pictures from even before then, but I don't. But at least I have the progression that I have and I'm going to continue to do it because it's very dramatic. Oh, and I've been also been using minoxidil foam, the ge just generic minoxidil foam. I've been using that probably since my 20s because I've always had thin hair, but not this, not basically, this is half of what I used to hair have on my head uh, before the massive shedding happened in 2017, 18. Those are the two things I'm super excited about. So I've got my iron, I'm still doing my armor thyroid. I'm still doing my testosterone, but just switched from cream to injections, to subcutaneous injections. And if anyone has questions about that, just send me an email, sallydollsykes at gmail.com, and I'll give you some information about that. And then the generic Tadalafil, mine are 7.5 milligrams, and they do last for a few days. You don't necessarily need to take them every day, but they are made to be taken every day if, if your doctor prescribes them that way. So you may see different prescriptions from your own provider and always, of course, default to that. Hair loss labs. What lab should you ask your doctor for if you're experiencing hair loss so that you can root out your root causes of hair loss? So we've talked about you know, iron and thyroid and hormones. What exactly are the names of the tests? And this is where you can get out your notepad and start writing these down. And I'm gonna also put these in the notes, so the YouTube video and in my podcast notes and in my Instagram post about this, hopefully also. So you're gonna wanna do, first of all, for iron, a full iron panel. And what that's gonna include is, of course, a CBC with auto diff and platelets. That's gonna include your hemoglobin and your hematocrit. But a full iron panel also includes a ferritin, a serum iron, TIBC, UIBC, and percent sat. You need all of those to find out really what your iron status is. And you really want all of those because sometimes some of those can be high, some can be low due to methylation issues. You could have hemochromatosis. You could have high iron that could be very inflammatory. You really want to know what your iron status is before you supplement with iron so that you don't overdose. It's really important. So those are the iron labs. Then you're going to want to get a comprehensive metabolic panel, which is going to include your glucose and some liver enzymes. You're also going to want to ask for an HbA1c test that is going to show your average blood sugar over the last three months. And then you're going to want to ask for a fasting insulin test. This one is so important, you guys. No one tests for fasting insulin. You can have a normal blood sugar and a normal A1c, and you can still have insulin resistance if you're Fasting insulin is over a five, and that can mean you can't lose weight, you're not eating anything and you're still gaining weight, you're inflamed, and it means your pancreas is working, having to work much too hard to get that toxic amount of blood sugar out of the bloodstream to make that blood sugar look normal on your labs. So very important to ask for a fasting insulin test. Then for thyroid labs, you're gonna want to insist on a full thyroid panel that is gonna be a TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and both Hashimoto's antibodies, TPO and TG. You're gonna want a full hormone panel, ladies. You're gonna want estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, free and total, with SHBG. SHBG is sex hormone binding globulin. Then you're gonna want your DHT, that's that androgen that testosterone will sometimes convert to DHT and cause hair loss. We wanna see where that is for you. And then if you can also get a DHEA and a pregnenolone test, those are two precursor hormones that are really important for our, our adrenal glands, our ability to cope with stress. They convert to other hormones downstream and they support your body under stress. So those are important to look at. You're gonna to wanna to look at your B12 and your vitamin D3. And if you're on hormonal birth control, I'd like you to ask your doctor for 
a serum copper and a serum zinc test. And that is because hormonal, synthetic hormonal oral birth control or oral estrogen of any kind can increase copper and lower zinc and cause copper toxicity, which lowers thyroid function, causes anemia, anxiety, brain fog, low cognition. So it's very important to find out if your copper and zinc are imbalanced. They should be about a one-to-one -one ratio in microgram per deciliter. And if they are not, you want to know that and address that. And that is one of the other underlying causes of, of hair loss is copper toxicity as well. You're gonna to wanna to ask them for a morning cortisol test. So when you go get your labs, go get them, if you can, between seven and eight in the morning. That's the best time to get that morning cortisol tested. It's also the best time to, to get accurate testosterone results. These All these labs are gonna be fasted too, by the way. You're also gonna want two inflammatory marker tests that are very important. First one is HSCRP, and that stands for high sensitivity C-reactive protein. It is an inflammatory marker that is associated with heart disease, stroke, dementia. And then you're gonna to wanna to ask for a homocysteine test that is also another inflammatory marker associated with dementia and methylation issues. So those are the labs to ask for. That's what I've done for my hair loss. Once you get your labs back, and once you've asked your doctor for those hair loss labs, if you'd like to contact me and have me analyze them for you from a functional or optimal standpoint, I'd love to do that for you because often you'll get these labs done and you'll be told, well, everything looks normal. But as we've talked about multiple times on this podcast, normal is not necessarily optimal. Every lab has a different normal range. And that is simply derived from the averages of all of the usually sick people getting those labs at that lab, right? As the American population gets sicker and sicker, those normal ranges are going to get sicker and sicker as well and have less and less relevance to good health disease prevention. So what I use when I analyze my coaching clients labs is optimal ranges that I have found through my own research, through other functional medicine uh, practitioners, reading studies, and I can share that with you. So I hope this really helps. I know hair loss is just awful and can be so demoralizing. And I really hope that some of these tips and tricks help you. One thing I want to say here before we end is that one of the most common hair loss supplements that you'll see is biotin, right? Especially a lot of patients who are experiencing hair loss or have low thyroid function are taking biotin. You wanna be off of biotin for at least three to four days before you go get your labs done because they're gonna interfere with thyroid labs. They interfere with the processing. And so your thyroid labs may come back looking better functioning than they actually are. And we want real actual results. We don't want anything interfering with those results. So if you are already on biotin for hair loss, please go ahead and stop that three or four days before you go in for those fasting labs, ideally seven to eight in the morning if you can. Try to get there before nine so we get accurate cortisol and accurate testosterone. And as far as timing for, for you ladies out there, if you're still cycling, try to get your labs done about seven days before your next period. And that's gonna tell us, if give us the most accurate progesterone results and tell us if you're ovulating. Because that's when progesterone, if you're ovulating, should be at its highest. And we wanna know if you're not ovulating because that can be a huge cause of hair loss and obviously infertility, but also insomnia, anxiety, low mood, uh, weight gain, all kinds of other issues. So. Those are the tips and tricks um, for getting your labs done. Go get your labs done and call me and let's figure out why you're having hair loss. I'd love to help. Bye.